What's up all my Jeep and friends? Today's video will involve da -da, LED taillights and how to fix a common issue that comes with upgrading your taillights. Any of your bulbs, front, rear, side markers, whatever, that flash whenever you turn right, whenever you turn left, whenever you go from incandescent bulbs to LEDs, it always, most of the time it creates an issue. But there is a very simple fix and you must watch the video to find out. So, want to know how to do the LEDs? follow along but before you take off and we're gonna show you how to do this remember hit that subscribe button down below because I do Jeep videos motorcycle videos car videos you never really know so you got to check them out www.fixjeeps.com is the website that this stuff lands on so with all that being said let's go okay to get started we gotta remove our factory tail lights take those four screws out first now if you just want to change your tail light bulbs there they are there's your backup light bulb pretty easy now if you want to remove the whole assembly like we're about to do, you got there, there, and there. 10 millimeter. When you get those three screws removed, the lens pop well, see how good shape that's in? This comes right out, then you got your wiring harness going back inside your tub here. And since I'm obviously not doing a plug and play meaning these lights don't have a plug that plugs directly into my harness, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my wires right here and splice into those to install the LED. Uh, looks like I'm going to clean that mess up real good before I put those on and that whole pattern goes there, there, and there. Matches up perfectly. Now I will have to drill these out for those holes to go through. Once you get the installation strip back you're gonna have three wires. Your black and white here should be your backup, uh, backup light. Green and black is gonna be your brake. Solid white will be your running light or tail light, and this right here you'll also tie your um, put your license plate light on too. Also, so whenever you turn on your lights or turn on your license plate, it's gonna be run off that white wire. So let's confirm that. What do you think? Sure, sure. I've got my little test probe here. I've got it grounded to the body. So what we're gonna do first is check the tail light since I've got my headlights turned on, which will be the solid white. camera see or not anyway my little light test lights coming on the solid white that is definitely my tail light now I'm gonna do my brake light we'll turn off the headlights and since I don't have another foot out here what I'm gonna do is take my little handy dandy toolbox here throw it on my brake pedal prop that wheel chalk up against it so it pushes the braking wheel now we're gonna test for the brake light again we we'll get our little test probe here this should be the green and black. And we got light. So that is definitely our brake. White is our tail light, which is leaving us the backup light for the black and white one. So we have confirmed our wires. Now I've got all my grounds tied together. I got two black grounds from the LED light, then my ground going to my uh, license plate light, going to that uh, fork connector here which I'm gonna put in behind this. Okay, but this is a flush fit, so how are you gonna do that? I'm gonna take 5 16 nuts, put behind this before I take it screwed into the body. I'm doing that for two reasons. One, give me a ground access, and two, I wanna space this out enough that the LED that I'm gonna put my license plate light is gonna fit back up inside here. So I need to space it out just a little bit. So I'm gonna use a 5 16 nut that's gonna go in between like this on all three of them. Okay, we got a wire soldered up now. What we got is white wire to black and white, red wire to the green black stripe, brown wire to the white. And also on this brown, you've got this extra wire here that's gonna run our license plate light. So white to black white, red to green black stripe, brown and your extra wire for license plate goes through your white so now I'm gonna pull my heat shrink over and I'll tell you what let's test it first before we get off froggy about that okay I've just got my ground hanging here on the body so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna go turn on the headlights which should turn on activate this wire and there we have our tail light now I'm gonna go put that toolbox on my brake light and we'll test it I'm gonna turn off the headlights
You now we got brake light. Now let's put the baby in reverse and see what happens. And there we have our backup light. So we have got our wiring correct. So now I can pull all my heat heat shrink over and get everything all sealed up. Okay, let's check out the difference between the two. Driver side LED, passenger side old school incandescent bulbs. Can't say that they're any brighter. What we're looking at is the parking light or running lights. And so, I mean, like I said, I can't really say that the LED is any brighter, but of course it looks a little bit more up to date. But what we can do at this point, let's hit that up. Uh, brake light and see what the difference is there okay now we're looking at the brake light again I can't see that the LED is even brighter than the incandescent style bulb but definitely does look more cool now let's try one more thing let's hit that backup light and see what it does for us okay there's our backup light no tail lights no brake lights just simply uh, backup lights and I almost believe that the incandescent style bulb is actually brighter so uh, I think the LED fails on that one Still, it's cool though, but I mean, even the stock ones never put out enough light to really for me to back up because my back wind is tinted and they never really put out enough light to make any difference for me. So, I will be putting a set of pods right back here on the bumper for the backup light. And I will be putting in our relay, but I'll make that another video. If y'all ever just had one of those days when you know you're better off staying in the house because everything you touch just goes wrong. Well, what you guys didn't see is I wired the brake light and the backup light backwards, or got wired them up wrong. So whenever I put the backup light on, the brake light came on. Whenever I put the brake light on, the backup light came on. So I had to unshrink wrap, take the solder off, turn all that around. But while I was re-soldering everything, I rushed out for the soldering iron, and I was dumb enough. See those two white spots? Yeah, don't grab the soldering iron with the wrong end. That hurts. Oh well, one of those days. Now it's time to get to the passenger side. Notice I only got part of my tail light. Well, here's the deal. On my tailgate, I'm hanging a 31150 for a spare. And when it swings open, boom, it pops my tail light and breaks it. Now what's supposed to have, what is missing out of this whole ordeal, and a lot of people don't realize it's uh, even there because it's, you know, it's missing because people take it off. There's supposed to be a bracket that comes out right here with a rubber bumper on the end of it. That when the spare tire swings out, it hits that and prevents it from getting into the tail light. Well, when I got the Jeep, that was missing. And just about everybody I know that's got a Jeep, this thing's missing. So, it pops your tail lights. So, I'm going to get my screws taken out and get that tail light taken out. When I finished up my driver's side tail light, I noticed something. Look at that. So, what I got to do is push up on my light to pull that back. So, I believe what I'm going to do is I want to take this light back off. And get in behind it where I drilled the holes out. I'm gonna make them just a little bit bigger and move that upward just a little bit. Now, same as the other side, once you get the Phillips head screws out, these are bulbs. Take out this one, this one, and that one, number 10 millimeter. Okay, once I got those bolts out, now typically I'm gonna cover this wire up. This is all you're gonna have is this right here coming out. That's it. But I've got that one also. Yes, I know the button is red. This is actually an extra ground that I run to the frame. I was having problems with this light right here. It kept going out because my ground was bad. So I ran an extra ground here. And you see the fork connection there. And I grounded it to that plate right there. So just another ground that I had run to the frame. Yeah, I know the wire's red. Grounds are supposed to be black. But that's just what I grabbed real quick. So it is what it is. So now I'm going to cut this, this, and start getting on with the wiring. Cut the light out the harness. And as soon as I did, this wire fell right down inside that hole. So I you go back underneath, you go way back up underneath here, speed it back out, and I kind of hung it on this little edge right here, walked off, it fell in again. So here's your trick. Take your wire tie, wrap around it loosely, you don't have to go so tight, and just leave all the tail sticking out, see? It won't fall down inside there now. So now we can strip this wire, this insulation here back, and get to our wiring, and start the wiring on this side. As soon as I cut that light off, this fell down inside there. So I had to take my hand, stick it up inside there, push it back up through this hole, and right here's a little flat spot on the wiring harness. I hung it on that and walked off. It fell back in again. So here's your trick. Get your wire tie, loosely wrap it around that, and just leave the tail sticking out here. That prevent it from sliding down inside there. So now we can cut the uh, protective jacket back here and get to our wiring and start our wiring on this side. 
Okay, same as the driver's side. On the passenger side, our wiring schematics is going to be white, black stripe, white, green with black stripe. Now, the green with black stripe is going to be your brake light. Solid white is going to be your running light or your drive or your tail lights. White with black stripe is going to be your uh, backup light. So, just for kicks and giggles, let's go. I'm going to go put that in reverse real quick, and we'll test that out. Okay, my backup light is on on the passenger side. And it should be here. See the light, light, the tester lighting up? Okay. We'll take it out of the uh, reverse and turn on our brake light. Okay, my driver's side brake light's on. And we should be going with the green, yeah, over here, green black. So we got light on there. There's our green and black. Now I'm going to take the brake light off, turn on our tail lights. Okay, as I walk past my driver's side tail light, it's turned on. And we're going to go for the solid white this time. And there we go. We got solid white. We got light on it. So now we confirmed our light, our wiring over here, which again is the same as the driver's side. Okay, let's get a heat shrink prepared now so we'll get all ahead of ourselves. Take a heat shrink and I kind of bait it up against right here. It comes out to about a little bit past this. So whenever I go to slide it forward to shrink it, it's going to cover our uh, solder joints real well. And the sweet thing about it is when I slide it over the wire, this jacket here just happens to be loose enough that I can slide it up inside the jacket to get it out of the way. Because what's going to happen as you solder your wires, the heat will creep up the wire a little bit. And if this solder, if this uh, heat shrink is too close to the solder joint, it'll cause the heat the heat shrink tubing to shrink down against this then you have to cut it off and trim it to bring it forward okay i pre-wired my tail light got it hanging here because i want to test this before i get all froggy by soldering everything up a solid white from your light goes to the black and white brown from your light goes to solid white red from your light goes to the green with black stripe to the body to the uh, wiring harness of the jeep then I've got my ground, just kind of got an extra wire run right here for the ground. But I'm going to tie this to that here in a moment. So first things first. Let's go turn, let's go throw it in reverse first. This will keep this on. And we have reverse lights. Turn on the tail lights. And you can see we got the LEDs lit up here. Then our brake light. Then you can see how well they're lit up there. So there you go. We've got it wired up correctly, so we can start soldering our wires in. Now with the heat shrink tubing I've got going on here, I showed you this a moment ago to where once I get this soldered in, I'm going to slide this over top of that to protect each individual solder joint. Then I've got a bigger sleeve here that once I get all this shrunk down, I'm going to pull all that together, and this bigger sleeve I'm going to pull over top of all that to help get it, give it plenty of um, weatherproofing as much as possible. So now I'm gonna get my, my solar guns over getting preheated. And so I'm gonna solder these in. So I'll be back with you in a bit. Okay, now that we got our wiring taken care of and everything heat shrinking protected, I can cut this little tab off right here, this wire tie, because obviously it's not gonna go fall back inside there anymore. So now what we need to do, drill these out. I'm using a 1964 drill bit, but the size really isn't a major issue as to what it is. It just needs to be big enough that those holes, those studs right there, go into the holes. That's all it boils down to. So let's drill those out next. Now that we got our holes drilled out, what you want to check is as you're getting drilling these holes back here in the back, the metal's going to roll back on it a little bit. So what you want to do is take your finger, go up the side here, and just lightly be careful. Don't cut yourself or wear gloves, honestly. The best thing to do. You grab hold of this little tab, it's going to be bent back right here, and you just rock it back and forth real slow and it'll snap that little metal shard off back there. Wear a pair of gloves, I didn't, but I'm telling you to for safety, but it's because I, because I was an idiot, I mean, you got to be. Break off those little metal tabs so the, so the nut here sits down flush. So now let's mount the light. I've only got one nut holding it on right now, but I just wanted to point, you guys, point something out to some of you guys who have never worked on Jeep Wranglers at all. To get to the nuts back here, Go way up in there. I don't know if the camera's gonna see it or not. But anyway, yeah, there they are, right about there. See the end of my finger? That's where the studs came through. 
So you gotta stick your arm way up inside that hole right there to get to it. So I'm gonna use a, after I get the nut started, I'm using a 10 millimeter wrench to tighten them up. Okay, this side's all tightened up and I've already went through all my light procedures for my running light, brake light, and all that kind of jazz. Everything works, even backup light. One of these days I'm gonna pull that dent out of there. Now, let's go back over to the driver's side. Remember earlier in the video where I pointed out that's hitting my light? Well, I'm about to correct that. So I gotta pull this light back off again. And just like the passenger side, you gotta go way up inside there to get to the nuts. So I'm gonna pull that back off. And what I plan on doing is elongating the holes, going straight up a little bit to move the whole light, shifting it upward a little bit. So I'm gonna pull that back off. And probably while I'm at it, I'm gonna redo my ground and do my ground to the frame instead of tying it to the back of the light right here. Okay, now that we have the light back off, what I plan on doing is taking a drill bit, stick it in here, and pushing the bit upward to elongate that slot to allow me to bring the light upward to clear the license plate frame. Yeah, I know there's conversion kits where I can move that license plate frame, where I can move it elsewhere on the bump or something like that, but that's not what I want to do, so that's how I'm going to elongate these holes to accommodate the light moving upward. Okay, I've elongated my holes just a little bit to push the light upward to clear the license plate frame. And to do that, basically what you do is you take your drill, push upward, push upward on the bit, and if you work it back and forth, it'll kind of act as a sawing action, elongating that hole. Now take your time with it, don't remove too much metal, don't remove more than you need. Then you take your bit, because it's going to be rough looking holes, take just move it up a little bit like it's right here, back and forth real lightly just to clean up your hole. Now we test our light, put it in place. I'm trying to do this and hold the camera at the same time. There it is. Now I'm pushing, like I could come down where it was, but I'm gonna push it up a little bit, cut my wires out of the way. See? Now my license plate frame's clearing. I only had to move it maybe an eighth of an inch or so, so I had to cut it upward. So now what I'm going to do is, at this point, here's my ground. I'm not really a big fan of how I did that ground. So I'm going to cut this back off, wrap me another ground down to the frame. It provides a lot better, plus it's light as it flush against this. Okay, I've got my new ground soldered up, heat shrink, and the main piece of the wire right here that was exposed. I took electrician tape, wrapped it real well, and right here is the end of the electrician tape where it stops at. Once you make that final wrap right there and break it off, get you a little wire tie, tie a, and lock down that end. So therefore the tape doesn't become unraveled and exposing all the wiring. Right now I have the ground just hanging inside the body. It's dropped down side here somewhere. So I'm gonna tie it to the frame here just a bit. So now I'm gonna tuck my wire, tuck my light back up here, tuck my wiring in and check my uh, license plate light. I got a feeling it's not gonna clear because of the thickness of this and the thickness of this. So I may have to modify my light just a little bit. So let's check that out. Okay, I've got my tail light put in and this is only in there finger tight. And surprisingly enough, my license plate light fit in perfectly. I like it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is get me some of my double sided sticky tape and go on each side here and each side here, build it up enough that it makes contact with the bottom of the light here. And that'll ensure it's staying in, staying in place. I still haven't soldered my wires together for my license plate light because I wasn't 100% sure yet until I got assembled where I was going to end up, end up putting the light. But now that I've decided, I like it and that's where it's staying. So I'm going to pull this out, solder my wires in together, and tuck all my wires in, get them all cleaned up. Be back with you in a bit. We've got the driver's side tail light straight now. Plenty of clearance for my license plate frame to come down. The light's tucked up inside here for the license plate. She's getting tight. Right here is where I put my ground for the tail light. So it looks like we're good to go on that. Uh, we'll do another quick test just for kicks and giggles. Okay, I've got my headlights on, which turns on the tail lights, obviously. So we got light there. We got light there. Got her in reverse. We got backup lights there. And we got a backup light there. And we got brake lights and brake light. Sweet! Now if y'all realize something, I've tested brake light, I've tested tail light, 
I've tested backup light, but what I have not tested is your turn signals. Watch this. Now I've still got my brake light on right now, so I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna turn left, because I'm on the driver's side lens. What's happening, or should I say what's not happening? We got no turn signals. There's a reason why. When you do the LED upgrades, when it comes to your turn signal lighting, like your front markers, your front turn signals, rear turn signals and such, when you do the upgrades for the LEDs, what a lot of people don't realize is the LEDs has such a lot less resistance. Now you got two different types of flashers. You got electronic flashers and you got your magnetic flashers. The magnetic ones relies on the resistance of the bulbs to know when to trigger to turn it off, on, off, on as a flash. The electronic ones don't rely on that. So what do we got to do? That's right, we got to upgrade the flasher now. So I'm gonna show you where that bad boy's at. It's way up underneath the dash. Okay, I've got my camera kind of crammed under my dash right here. And what we gotta look at is right there. See right there in my pinky right there, that's your flasher. We gotta change that bad boy out. Now it's not easy getting up in there. You gotta cram your hand up inside that wiring harness behind the dash and all that and grab hold of it and pull hang your fingers underneath the back of the edge right here, pull outward and wiggle at the same time because what you gotta do is unplug those two posts right there. So here is the new one. Now I picked this one up down at the auto parts store instead of ordering it. And if you gotta look, so if this camera focuses, it says works with incandescent bulbs or a mixture with LEDs. So you gotta make sure that your flasher works with the LEDs. And as you can see the part number LL552, so I'm going to pop this out of the pack. I'm going to plug it in and see if that corrects the issue. All right, we're back here to the tent lights again. What do you think? Let's check it out. Left turn. Look at that. Ain't that just sweet? Let's hit the brake light also to make sure that's functioning like it should. That's being cantankerous. Okay, I've got brake also pressed. Turn signal still look good. Now let's turn the turn signal off. Turn signal's off. Brake light's still lit. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now let's test one more thing. Brake light's off. Well, of course it is. Now what about your emergency flashers? Are they gonna work? There you go, emergency flashers work. Most of the time, your emergency flashers are still gonna work with your LED upgrades. If they don't, you have to get the flasher that accommodates the LED. Okay, I'd like to point something out to you. Most people don't even pay attention to the flasher when they pull it out, and one would think that you, when you plug it back in that one of your blades here is running you no know, horizontal, the other running, one running horizontal, one running vertical. That's not the case. Looking into the fuse block, this post and this post are sitting at a V shape, the V at the bottom. So whenever you go to plug it back in, don't go like this because you're gonna drive yourself nuts or like that, you'll drive yourself nuts. Position it like this where your V is pointing toward the bottom of the fuse block. That is the correct position for this to plug in. So just a little pointer to keep from driving yourself crazy. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. There's the LED tail lights all installed, red rock. Now, why did I install them? It wasn't necessarily a case of being, hey, the brighter for safety or anything like that. If they were, that would have been the definite bonus. But as I pointed out earlier in the video, this passenger side tail light kept getting busted because every time my tire swing out, it would pop it. Now, yes, you can flush mount them. You can cut you a big old hole in the back of your Jeep right here and get those flush mount ones. Those are cool. I'm down with that if you guys want to do that. That's cool. But I came across these right here. They were the stock shape, but a lot thinner. And you know, trying to stay with the stock theme of, you know, the square headlights for the YJs and the square taillights for the, as they originally came out with. Now let's check our clearance. Let's swing open with the gate swing. And you can see right here, I've got a limiting strap right there that stops the gate from swinging too far. The limiting strap is now tight. And I have got plenty of clearance between my taillights, so it's not gonna get it. Hello, my Jeep and friends. 
I hope you learned something from that video. I wanted to upgrade my tail lights to something that one that would clear this uh, tire when it swung out. Also, I wanted something that was kind of factory looking for the sake of I didn't want to cut a hole in the body, you know, do the recessed style or the flush mounts. Really wasn't into doing that. Would it hurt anything? Not really. Am I afraid to cut my Jeep? Obviously not if you look at any of my other videos. But I thought for the people who want to have a factory looking tail light that's easy to install, these are the ones to go with. Check out this, uh, on my website, www.fixchief.com. I'll put the schematics as to what wire goes to which wire on the lights so you guys can have that down pat. And remember, this light, you gotta elongate your bolt holes upward just a little bit to clear your license plate. Pretty simple. And also be sure to put you a light here for your, uh, to light up your license plate. Some state laws require you to have that. I'm pretty sure Tennessee does, but I'll put it there just in case. So everyone, Hope that video became educational for you. Thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. And comment down below. Tell me what you did to upgrade your tail lights and how it worked out for you. So remember, www.fixchiefs.com and check it out. I got one of my test shirts in today. If you'd like to have one like this, eat, sleep, jeep, wrench, repeat. Such a vicious cycle. Got the little symbols going on with it. Sweet. So if you like it, go to www.fixchiefs.com. Look over to the left. Pull on the menu bar, click on the icon, or do you want up? Limited time only. I can't guarantee how long I'm going to have them there. So, everyone, appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace. Later, y'all.